parents are here. There is what we call stereotype mm -hmm. and assumption. Mm -hmm. I gave an example the other day of um, a health visitor visiting the family and talking about uh, issue of FGM, circumcision. And assumed, oh, that I'm, I think you are going to uh, circumcise this child. And before you know it, they took the child and they get away. An assumption until the court said, so what evidence do you have? They had to return the child. So there are a lot of um, those assumptions and uh, uh, about we. So what are we going to do? We can't keep on fighting. We have to say, okay, let's see what we can do so that they see that actually they are just, the assumptions are not right. So go ahead, man of God. Oh, yes. Um, I like that explanation. That's very beautiful. And Mr. Sunday, that was really lovely. You really explained in depth because these children, their emotional well-being has to be guarded by we parents. I will go on. Um, I'll give an example again. Having visitors in our houses, in our homes, like people coming to live with you, they can live with you for a week or a month. If you are not sure of that friend you brought in the house, protect the children, guide them, because that person could be your friend, but they are coming there to exploit the children or teach children sensitive things that it's not like pastor was talking about values, that, oh, it's all right, your mom is not here, you can have it. Don't tell mommy this, don't tell mommy that. That it is not good for children because that person is training your children more than you now. The children learn to hide things from you while you've taught your children to be very open. So I'm just saying we should be vigilant around people visiting our homes when we have young children growing up. That is part of it because children get to school, they talk about everything. Uncle so-and-so or auntie so-and-so is like this and it's like that. While they are planting bad seeds, on the children. Pastor was talking about sleeping overs. Some people accept it, but some people don't. Like me personally, sleepover is no, no, no. My kids know they'll say, oh, so and so invited me, but I know your answer anyway. I'll just say, that's good. The fact that you know the answer, that's all right. Because they move on to learn certain things, not in our homes, outside. Mm -hmm. And because we are not watching them to the point where we miss those signs, children are not only abused by we as parents, they can be abused outside. When a child, a child is really bubbly, laughing all the time, they come in, they tell you everything. One day a child just walk in. Don't say, oh, Belinda is moody today. Give them time, give them time. As they come in, they're moody, leave them for a while but go back. Oh, today you're not really yourself. Do you wanna share with me? Always agree with them. If they don't wanna tell you then, say to them, do you know what? I have my husband is here. If you don't wanna tell me, you can talk to someone. Let the children have someone as well. They trust that they can talk to. I will still continue with the children. We have teenagers. As they grow to that teenage stage, some of them, they are scared maybe to communicate with us due to the tone of our voice. They already know what you like and what you don't like. So they are weighing their options. Shall I say, shall I not? Not all the children, some children might not be comfortable or feel confident enough to share certain things with you. When children reach like the age 12, 13, their hormones change. They tend to feel in a certain way that they don't wanna share with you. So if there's a man and this is a boy, always guide them, say, you know what? You can talk to your dad. If it's a girl, please talk to me. I'm just touching on those things while I'll go back to safeguarding, just things to watch out. Because when things escalate, that's where safeguarding come in. They only come in when something has gone wrong, where there's neglect, where there's emotional abuse, where there's bullying and all 
I can name loads of them when they take place. So again, when we look into safeguarding, what are the main things that the government wants to protect the child? What are these key things that the, child, the government is protecting the child from? From the bullying, from harm. Some of the children can self-harm. Self-harm is due to frustration. I won't talk much about single parents because I don't know how they live in their homes, but most of the time you find out that couples, people who are married, we tend to argue a lot, misunderstanding. Some people don't wait until the children are not around before they talk about certain issues. So when you are arguing there, or maybe a dad is calling the mom names or the mom is calling the dad names, it affects the children. And when it's happening in their homes, they don't know who to talk to. And they'll let sleep in school. They'll go and say something in school. Or some children start cutting themselves because it's now emotionally affecting them. And then they now go up to the point where they self-harm themselves. They start cutting themselves or you just see bruises and stuff like that. So it's good for us as parents to watch out for things like that. That's what causes self-guiding because in school, when they get there, the teachers will be like, when they do PE, you find that they wear shorts and short sleeves. So they are no more with full uniform, it's just PE. Then the teacher will start noticing, oh, Belinda, you have a bruise. What happened to you? They might not say. And you find out that that child not saying that, they will assume is the parents. When it wasn't the parents, the parents only contributed by that argument or calling each other names. So self-guiding comes in. And you find that we as parents, it might take time before you can defend yourself that this is not exactly what happened because some children will not say anything. But the teachers, when they see those bruises, it's an alert for them like, oh, something is going on at home. So the school might call you. Some teachers will call you that, oh, Belinda, I've noticed there's a bruise there. There's a bruise there. What happened? And you as a parent, you go, I don't know what happened. They will assume you know. They will now raise safeguarding. That means the local authorities will now get involved. They will assume the child is being abused. While the child was not physically abused, was emotionally abused by our words, what we say to them and how we say around them and we as parents bickering all the time. Um, I will move on from that. Again, when they say um, children are vulnerable, what they mean is that these children, half of the time, they don't really know what they are doing themselves. They are watching us, everything that we do, they learn more from us than outside. Because going to school, they are not dealing with families in school, they are dealing with friends and teachers. And in school, they have routines that they follow as soon as they get to school, they put their bag down, they line up or they sit on the floor, listen to the story. So a lot happens at home, which the local authorities are more interested in what is happening at home because what is happening in school, they can solve it without even you getting involved to a certain level. So safeguarding is only called when they feel the child is being neglected, abused, or any kind of emotional abuse. Again, threat, threatening a child. If you don't do one, two, three, like most of we Africans, I'll send you back to Africa. You go and live with one auntie there in the village. You go and fetch water and the children, the child said, will go bust. What? Me, back in Africa, I can't cope. Then emotionally, you have not punished the child, but because of what you have said, the child is now scared. If I talk to my mom or I do this, they will send me back to Africa. Sometimes it could be you didn't use that kind of word to threaten them. You might have said, I will hit you with this belt. Like um, 
Mr. Sunday said, you, you feel like the child will feel, oh my God, is this what they, so when they go and tell someone, my dad said, you hit me with a belt. They believe that the child has been beaten with that belt before, but it's not able to say to them because he's scared when they get home, they'll be beaten again. So they start watching the child or observing. So the more you keep threatening the child, the more the child may be behaving in a certain way in school or feels withdrawn. If it's a child that used to raise their hands up when the teacher asks a question, all of a sudden the child is not raising their hand. They say, what's wrong with you, Belinda? Oh, I'm still thinking about what my dad said. Some of them, they'll say, it's time to go home. I'm scared, why? Because my dad said he will hit me with a belt. You only threaten the child. So they call that abuse. You have abused the child with your words. So emotionally, the child is suffering from that abuse. So you find maybe they will call social services or a counselor to start talking to that child. So once they call a counselor, it means on my part as a parent, I have failed in some way. While we are very good parents, the child is clean, you're taking care of them, but it was our mouth that has put that child or us in problem. So from there, you find that you go to school, you're going to pick the child up and they say, oh, Mrs. So-and-so, you can't pick so-and-so today, come this way. And then you're wondering, where am I going? Straight away to an office until proven wrong and not guilty. They will not release the child. From that day, the child is gone. Saying that the child saying, oh, my mom leaves me alone in the house. She goes out, she, I don't know what time she comes back. They won't wait for you to come and explain. Straight away, they will organize another mother for the child. The child is gone. That is neglect. So um, I don't really know how much I can go now, Pastor, because I have just three minutes left. But I want to give the parents an opportunity to say something like, what do you understand about what I just say in just a few minutes? Thank you so much. For how, how many minutes do you have? You're going to walk, aren't you? Today, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I thought uh, the program finishes at six. Yes, we finished six. Um, but uh, because usually we are supposed to have it next week, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but because our turnout is not as uh, expected, uh, we want to finish it. To, we want to finish today. So let's give you a fifteen minutes, okay, or thirty minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Mm. So, parents, do you have anything to say on what I just said? Is there anything you want to add that you know, or something that you were not aware of? You want to know more? Well, I do appreciate, you know, your explanation is very clear and uh, I've just shared my own experience, you know, here. Uh, one of the things that uh, I notice is that uh, sometimes uh, most things we do not deliberate, uh, which is being used against us, you know, it comes like a surprise, for example, you prepare your child in the morning to, to school and you prepare breakfast and the child uh, refused to eat or did not want to eat the meal for whatever reason you cannot explain or just have a little of it, especially we're African. And the child gets to school and begin to, uh, not too long, the child begin to ask for the food, the meal you put in the bag, the child eat it, you know, and begin to ask for food before uh, the next meal you pay for in school, you know, in between when the child is supposed to eat, is asking for meal, and they are recording it. They don't even, they won't even call you as a parent to tell you, oh, when you brought your child, this is what happened, you know, but in, in, and and it's locked there, uh, and then uh, a child does some other thing. You you they they don't tell you. You they they give you a list like you know. Uh, this is what we want a child. Uh, for example, when my child 
you know, was going to nursery, I pay for their dinner, hot dinner and other things. But there are other things you say, okay, you can put for the child. Uh, crisps is among, you know, eat. So we just put that one as snacks. But they put it, they write it as unhealthy, you know, as something for you. But they don't, uh, you know, they, they, but it's not, it's in their list. The list of, you know, things they, they want you to put, you know, apart from the fact that you pay for hot dinner, you know, for the child. And most time when you go to school, they tell you your child did not eat, does not like the meal. So, so you now ask them, okay, they should encourage the child with different meals because back when we do African meal, uh -huh, we do African meal. So they lock it. And then when maybe there's issue, because what I'm asking is just around the issue of safe guiding, which, you know, you have clearly stated that it's not only about, you know, abuse, neglect, you know, so they, they will now want to tie it in terms of, you know, maybe the child is being neglected, you know, and, you know, that. So how do you really navigate around all this in terms when you are given explanation, when you are called upon, uh, you know, maybe before, because once it is with them, you need to think of how you can get yourself out of, you know, this, you know, how do you really navigate around explaining this to them? Okay, I will come in before I call Pastor Chika to explain a bit more. So when you register a child from the beginning, when a child starts school, they ask you simple, simple questions like, how is your child like? That is an opportunity for you to say, this is my child, Belinda. Belinda does not like to eat breakfast. We try to encourage her by maybe giving her Weetabix, oats and buy all these kind of um, cereals for breakfast or offer bread. But no matter what you offer to her, she does not like to eat in the morning. Between nine and 10, that's when she likes to have something to eat. So you are working according to how the child is. So you're letting them know from nursery that this is how this child is. Let's say, for example, some children between 12 and 11, they like to sleep. Once they finish eating, they want to sleep. You tell them, this is how Belinda is. So if most of the things you have told them, they've written it down, this is how Belinda is. They will not bother you that, oh, Belinda is not eating. They'll use the word, encourage her to eat. So when they list all this kind of food, like you said, they put crisps, they put juice. To be honest with you, they don't want children to have juice. They don't want children to have crisps. They don't even want them to have all these kind of snacks that we like, like biscuits. They don't want them to have it. You'll find that the child that they've put carrot as a snack, they will clap for their parents. Oh, that's a healthy snack. So when it comes to that, just go back and ask them and say to them, I looked at the list. I bought these things according to the list. Which one do you want me to take out, not to give to the child? What exactly do you expect in the lunch box? Don't allow them to keep reminding you. The more they keep reminding you, they feel like you're not understanding them. So it's best you go back and say, okay, I've stopped putting Chris there. I'm now putting one, two, three, but there's no biscuit there as a snack or there's no crisps or juice because they prefer them to have water and milk. Sometimes they give them juice like once in a week in school. So, uh, Pastor, can I hand over to you to explain a bit more when it comes to the snacks bit in school? Because um, Brother Sunday was asking, yeah, how does he go up, how to go about it? And I said to him in the beginning, when you, when the child starts nursery, you tell them exactly how the child is. If it's the child who don't like to eat. You explain to them. Sometimes as well, children tend to lie as well. I used to look after my sister's child. As soon as he sees me, go like, oh, mommy, because that's what he calls me. My mom gave me only orange all day. <laughs> I didn't eat anything. I only ate orange. But because I know him, he doesn't like to eat. So I'll just say, really? I'll call your mom and ask her if she gave you orange. Come. Mommy, did you give him orange? No, there's not even orange in my house. I say, you see, if you want to eat, just tell me, auntie, I want to eat something. Sometimes children can tell lies as well. 
I'll yeah. hand over to you, Pastor. Yeah, no, no, no. You are on the right track. Um, as you said, the best, the best way uh, when you are dealing with um, uh, schools is to, if you encounter any challenge, tell them, tell the teacher. It's in their notes. Because if they are, if the other way around, they are asking you about that, they will use it against you that you didn't even notice it. Like let's say, um, let's say a child that is in care now, and maybe there's that um, contact. If there is something as well, the same thing you take note of that. When you're talking to the social worker, you can say, I noticed, I noticed that this is this is what I'm trying to do. The child doesn't do it. So in school, you will let them know at home, this is what my child likes. This is what I give. I want to give them orange. They struggle with it. They prefer crisps. And I'm trying to move them over to here. So you can also ask them, so what is your, how, what's the secret? How do I move them over from less of crisps to more of fruits? So they will also give you idea. Those things shows that you, that you are actually really caring than when they are the ones reminding you. Because as Digna said, in school, to be honest, I don't know now when my children were in primary school, they, even if you don't have fruit in your, in your bag of your child, the school will always give them fruit for them to eat. In fact, they had a time they call fruit time, <laughs> snack time. And they, they will have to uh, have snack. So from them, some of them began to learn how to eat more fruits than at home. Uh, yeah, I don't know um, if I'm a bit close to what you asked. Dickness, am I close to a bit to what you asked? Or was there yes. a particular? Hmm, okay. Yes, that's what Brother Sunday was saying. Like the, the school will say to him, oh, they, ch they will keep repeating themselves. Like, oh, the snack. They were complaining about the snack he was giving to the child. So I was saying crisps. In this country, they don't like you to give children crisps as a snack. They say it's unhealthy. Yeah. In fact, uh, let me say yes. this. So, yeah. Yes. Sorry. There's this um, family that just came newly. Lovely child. And when the child came here, maybe they were giving, you know, that's why in my, it started when my children were small. We don't, I don't usually buy squash. I don't buy any drink you mix or uh, something like that. I, I go for pure fruit juice, non-concentrate. So even if it's one I buy, even if it's two or three, all of us will share it. So. It's only once in a while, maybe if we buy uh, takeaway food, at times it's okay, let's drink Coke. But in my house, I wouldn't go to market and buy Coke. I won't buy all those drinks you mix. So this couple came, I think they started giving the children so much of it. The last, the middle child, this child was good in Nigeria. Immediately they took the child to school. As soon as the school starts, as they are sitting here, the child has run out. He will run down there. They pursue him. He run down there. In fact, they now said, "Oh, this child has a um, <laughs> that he, maybe the child is autistic." It seems that the child is autistic. They want to refer the child, and the dad screamed. I said, "Not my child. My child is not." They said, "This is what they are complaining." I said, "Well, if you don't do something, this is a route that your child will go, or there, this child you lose this child." So I had to sit them down. So, okay, they tell your wife. I spoke to the wife. I said, "What do you give your child at home?" She mentioned all the sweet sweet. I said, "Do you know that when you give them so much of those things, they get hyper hyperactive? So even if you want to give them uh, like Coke, you dilute it and give them a little bit of it. But most of those things are full of sugar, and when it goes into children, boom! I said, please minimize it." Minimize it and see the difference. You can't believe that they change, diluted so much that when this child, within one week, this boy just turned around and go to school, sit down, list things. And they called me and said that this was like magic. They didn't do anything, just that they just changed all those scripts. They, yeah, you give scripts once in a while, but before you give scripts, let it be that they have eaten something healthy. Uh -huh, not when they are empty stomach. 
oh, to this, you know, at the time you do it all to make them get off our back. You give them, okay, go and take, you have, um, you know, the small can drink, uh, the packet one. You just have loads of them, go and take, go and take. You think you are doing a good thing. It gets them uh, hyperactive and teachers don't like it. Remember, they want children who will sit down and listen. A teacher does not have time to chase five children and uh, having disruptive children. Now, you if if I, as a parent, I give my children this, um, uh, what do they call it? What do they call fizzy drink? You yes. give your child fizzy drink. She gives her child fizzy drink. You, one teacher is dealing with all these children. How do you expect them to cope? So they, discover, they themselves discovered and they, they are trying to encourage parents. Yes, there's time for all those things, but let it not be a regular occurrence. Give them things that are fruits are very encouraging, very healthy. It does not have side effects on them. And also it's a way of introducing them permanently into eating vegetables and fruits. So yeah, so if they are talking about that, you it's something you have to change, go off all that. It's not that you will not give them at all. So once in a while, maybe it's a reward as well. You can use it as a reward. Okay, if you tidy up your room, the person who tidies up the room today, uh, you're, you're going to have a, your own piece. Which please? Not every now and then. Yeah. So the food, the lunch box, yeah, shouldn't contain. I know in Nigeria is encouraged so much, but Nigerian food, they don't put, uh, there are some of the food that, yeah, if it's Coke, it's very high in sugar as well. Mm -hmm. But most of the other food is not so, some of them are even natural back home. Some of the things we may give our children uh, may be natural. So but here, you just try and stop it. And they talk to the children, tell them why. Tell them why, because if you remove it, the children think you are being cruel to them. <laughs> if completely without explanation. I believe in engaging the children so much, no matter how small they are. Engage them, explain to them what they are doing and the reason. Mm. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. That was really beautiful. A very well explained um, situation there. We learn every day. And um, going back to that, when it comes to things like food, it comes as physical abuse 